Okay, just rolling up to 2 p.m. UK British summertime. Um, if you can hear me and you can see my uh, the Ticknell welcome screen, if you just type a Y in the chat box so that I know we are, uh, are good to go. A Y in the chat box if you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen and we will get going. Testing, testing, testing audio one, two, three. Uh, let's see. Testing audio one, two, three. If you can hear me and you can see the welcome screen, can you type a Y into the chat box, please? Okay, let's uh, let's get started here. Welcome to today's uh, live trade analysis and market analysis session with me, Patrick Manley. Um, before we jump into today's content, um, risk disclaimer, obviously very important. Uh, with specific reference to today's presentation, uh, the views expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative of or representative of those held by Ticknell UK or Ticknell Europe Limited. For those of you here for the first time, brief introduction to myself. Um, like I said, my name is Patrick Manley, and after I graduated from King's College London, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup that was focused on C-suite uh, executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com uh, bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the markets, oftentimes quite literally overnight. So in 2000, well, late 2004, I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately, day gambling the S&P 500. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains, and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. Say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading and sort out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years, it was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual who was focused on financial gains to becoming purely process orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and have a professional trading mindset, and you really understand the true nature of trading being uh, a numbers game in which you're simply playing the probabilities, you lose the emotional uh, investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. Since 2010, I've also mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm engaged in other market-orientated projects. I am a resident market expert for, uh, for Ticknell, 
exclusively providing market and trade analysis, uh, uh, provide an in-depth daily market outlook, um, breaking down the fundamental and technical drivers for the day ahead. I also provide uh, daily technical trade setups, and you can access those um, through the Tickmill Ideas tab here through TradingView. I'll drop that into the uh, into the chat there, so you can uh, you can follow up and take a look at that. Um, and most recently, I have uh, been responsible for growing the Tickmill e mini strategy group, where I provide a daily uh, specific trade plan with intraday trade ups, updates. And since its inception in April of this year, I've delivered over 1,200 points of upside. Uh, we've just recently now launched the, uh, the Telegram channel for those traders who have a, uh, a futures trading account with Tickmill. And in there, I provide um, uh, daily institutional insights from tier one investment banks. I also provide uh, trade uh, alerts for all for a variety of futures products and we also do an, a daily hour um, hour long uh, live stream session where i trade live uh, the s p 500 during the opening hour of the uh, the cash session uh, 230 to 330 uk time so uh, for those interested you uh, you might want to follow up uh, through the uh, through the uh, the website or you can drop me a message, I'll, I'll post my email. I'll also just post this into the, this is the free Facebook group that you can access as well. And you can get my daily trade plan through there. Just send a, a membership request and I'll add you into the group, About 175 uh, members in there now. And, uh, and I post uh, the daily trade plan uh, for traders to, uh, to follow up with it. Say it's, it's a video, it's normally about three to five minutes long, it just gives you the, the key levels that I'm looking to uh, to participate at uh, for the cash session day ahead. So that gives you a flavour of where I'm coming from. Now let's jump into the charts, and we are going to review the daily charts here. Got a bunch of, uh, of charts that I want to run through. Um, can I just say, uh, in terms of uh, Process. If uh, if you do have any questions, if you could just make a note of them, and um, and I'll open up a Q brief Q and A at the end. If there are any charts you want me to take a look at, I don't cover. Uh, can do so then. Um, so just make a note of any questions, and I'll uh, I'll come back to those at the end. So let's start with the S and P five hundred. This is actually the E mini S and P, the futures contract, but same same price patterns. Um, what I'm looking for with the S and P now is looking for a move to basically create. Uh, sorry, to uh, finalize the five wave sequence here. Ideally, and this is just a, a little bit of market dynamic here, we're heading into um, the Fed meeting next week, the FOMC, on the 3rd of November. And um, the market is pricing basically that they are going to announce uh, tapering then. And so ideally what I'd like to see is, uh, is the market to, uh, to move up into that announcement, and then we get a, a correction that will provide a pullback that will set up then uh, a year a rally into uh, the seasonal year end rally. So uh, what we're looking for at the moment, this is this current structure. So we're thinking about this as a five wave sequence here. So we have that's our one, two. So we're looking for a three, four, and a five to uh, to complete, and then we will be looking for a pullback before we set up for the next leg to the upside in terms of the S&P. So in terms of the trading situation at the moment, what I'm looking for, if we're using this as our current 3-4 uh, consolidation, the minimum upside objective that we would have here will be a 127 extension of that consolidation zone. So what we're looking for is um, any pullbacks at the moment to, to find support for this fifth wave extension into uh, the 46.33 level. And then from there, we're watching for some momentum divergence to develop to give us an opportunity to, uh, to basically fade that test for the pullback, bigger corrective pullback, and then we should get that year-end extension to the upside. 
So the, the imminent target we're looking for is uh, 4633, and we're looking for opportunities to buy into that target zone. We're currently trading at uh, 4558, so got about 70 points of upside to play for. And uh, with the Tickmalee Mini Group, I'll be updating opportunities uh, in real time today for that. But that's the, the structure that we're looking at. The NASDAQ trade, still running. Um, and ultimately now, we, uh, we were long through the break of that, uh, that pin bar reversal there. And it's running up uh, nicely. What we're looking for now is uh, potential for a pullback here versus a, a double top scenario. Uh, but what I'll be specifically looking for, let me just move that. What we want to see is an equal legs. So the area where we would be looking to re-engage on the long side will be any pullbacks into the uh, 15,300 area will be, uh, should be bought there. And then we should trade up into the ascending trend line resistance that comes in. Uh, let's see where it's coming at the moment. So around the 16,200 level uh, is, the, is the upside objective there in terms of, uh, in terms of the current structure. Now, again, if we think about the idea uh, that I just referenced in terms of this, uh, the Fed meeting next week and the likely that the market sees a bit of a pullback, it could be that we, we have uh, this pattern play out. So if we think five equals one, so we could get a pull a trade up into this uh, 15,900, and then we correct again into the, um, the trend channel support area. So this would be uh, seeing the same correction in terms of most of the indexes, and then we extend up into year end. So it's really going to be key uh, to see how the market trades. And, well, firstly, it's going to be key to see if the Fed actually announced tapering, but it seems to be pretty fully priced at the moment. And then it's going to be about uh, the scale and scope of that. And so that's going to really define whether or not we just run this up for the route um, into the top side, or we get the correction next, uh, or we get a correction developed next week, and then we uh, we should see a tradable low develop. But we'll be updating that uh, as we go. The Dow is coming into it's ascending trend line resistance, so I'm looking for a pullback in the Dow to this trend line support area. Um, 34,960-ish 30, 34, uh, zone to watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage that on the long side. And again, with this, with the situation with the Fed next week, it might be that we get a deeper pullback. So, you know, we could be trading back down into this support zone um, before then taking off once again to the upside as, we, uh, as the market digests the Fed tapering. In, uh, in real time. So we're paying, paying close attention to these, these key levels uh, in, the, in the Dow. Firstly, we're going to watch for this trend line test and a, a fourth wave pullback and then a fifth wave, and then we'll see how, we, uh, how the price action develops. But for now, this, whilst this trend channel remains intact, focuses on the upside, and we want to be looking at, uh, at long positions. Russell, this is a trade that I'm watching very closely. Uh, for a year-end rally in the Russell. Um, pullbacks now into this high volume node and this uh, pitchfork support area. So we've got uh, 22, 28. So anywhere, 20, anywhere in that zone, I'm going to be watching for bullish reversal patterns for long positions to target a minimum 2441 on the upside. And that minimum is the 127 extension of our wave four consolidation here. Um, so that is a, that's certainly one that's on the radar for, uh, for the coming sessions. DAX uh, still running long positions here. Any pullbacks now should find support into the 15,500 area. And ultimately we're looking for this to grind it out to the upside and get a test of the ascending trend line resistance uh, into year end 17,200 zone. Is, uh, is the upside objective there. No clear trade at the moment in the Nikkei. I think we probably have to test this trend line again uh, before we, uh, we can think about retesting uh, the prior cycle highs in the Nikkei. Dollar index, 
So with this dollar now, I'm uh, I'm looking for any pullbacks uh, to, to any pullbacks into um, into this trend line support which comes in at the 93 handle to get bullish reversal pattern from there to set long positions looking for a, a 96 or late 95 test and then um, that should set up so the the pullback should come ideally will come into uh into next week and then we get the taper announcement get that uh buy signal and then that extent once once we get that extension i think that will should see the market caught uh offside and we'd be trading into the uh 50 percent retracement here so that comes in just above at uh, 96.50. So I'm watching for an opportunity to get long the dollar to play for a buy the rumor and then sell the fat type setup in uh, in the dollar index once we uh, if we ideally get that tapering announcement next week. So any break of that trend line, its internal trend channel. Uh, or a test of the trend line here is going to be an opportunity on the long side to play for that uh, 90, late 95, early 96 test. Gold <clears throat> posted this one yesterday. We uh, we held this high volume node in gold, and we are uh, we're running higher now. That was posted into the uh, trade the trade ideas on the uh, trading view account. So what I'm watching for now with gold ultimately is a move up to test this major ascending trend line resistance coming in at uh, 1832. From there, we either uh, pull back and get a proper rejection and get back down into the ascending trend line uh, support area. What we also want to what I also want to note here is that we still have the potential for gold to, uh, to play out this uh, corrective pattern which would actually have us down trading in the 1500 level uh, whilst we hold this resistance. But for now, the focus looks to be on the upside. And if we can see how price responds when we get that test of the trend line, if we break through, if we get a clear break of that on, uh, on a closing basis, then I think uh, then we'd certainly want to think about gold retesting the 1919 handle. And we've also got then the idea that we've got equal legs here, First area to focus on will be that 1877 zone, but then through there we look for 1919. Um, but it's really going to be key to see how we respond at this 1830 uh, is, uh, is the level to pay attention to coming sessions. Crude oil, getting the pullback here in crude. And I, uh, what I want to see is this trend line get tested. Um, and then we look for bullish reversal patterns to get long crude. And then I'm targeting the ascending trend line resistance coming at 93.60. And then from there, I think we can have a more sustained correction um, in crude oil. But certainly whilst we pull back and test this trend line support, get a bullish reversal pattern, we are going to be looking to, uh, to buy crude for a move up into that 93.30 area. Bitcoin. Looking for a three-wave corrective move now in Bitcoin to test and hold 50, uh, 56,700. And then from there, we are going to be targeting that 75,000 test, which, uh, which I've been talking about. So uh, looking for a three-wave move here back into uh, the 56,000 level, but a high volume node there as well uh, to get long Bitcoin, which are bullish reversal patterns there, and ultimately, we look for a move up to 75,000. The alternative scenario here, and I'm just going to blow this up a bit, is um, bring in a trend line here. Is a close through the trend, this interim trend channel may be the, uh, may suggest that the correction has actually completed here in three waves. So it's, it's done the minimum technical requirement of getting that three wave corrective move. So if we get a close back through this trend line resistance, let's get this shaped up properly. Uh, so let's see, if we get through, close through 62,000, maybe uh, 
sufficient to have completed the correction. And then we just look for the extension up into our target zone. Uh, but ideally, what I'd like to see is a, a more pronounced three wave corrective move to get into this uh, support zone. So I'm going to be keeping an eye on Bitcoin. I'm going to, I'm going to update that um, in the in the trading view over the coming sessions, because I think there's opportunities developing there near term in Bitcoin. We've also got Ether here. Similar idea, really. I'm looking for a three way correction, but this high volume node and the projected pitchfork support coming in 34.41. So pullbacks into that area, I think, are uh, attractive on uh, on the long side. But again, the alternative scenario here is now we take we've got a let me just move that. And bring this in. We've got a little triangle here developing. So a close through the triangle resistance would actually suggest that this correction is, is done for now. Um, and then what we'd be thinking about, let's clear this in, is another test of, uh, so we take out the highs and we can start to look at the 127 extension and the midpoint of the channel. So uh, 5124 on the upside. So a couple of scenarios here, we either get a close through that uh, trend line resistance that's coming in 4303 at the moment. Um, if we do get that close, then uh, I think it's going to be uh, a grinding a case of grinding out to the upside and looking for that 5124. Um, so, or we hold the trend line resistance and ideally get a move into that high volume mode before taking off to the upside. A couple of uh, opportunities there developing, and like I say, I'll uh, I'll update those in the coming sessions via the uh, the trading view channel. So dolly yen, looking for it to hold this trend line resistance, it might it might be doing a bigger uh, double correction here. Let me just move that for you and um, draw in the target zone here. So we have potential A, B, C. So any pullbacks into this 1300 level should, uh, should see buyers step back in. And we can start to think about uh, a test then of the equality objective at 50, uh, 115.76. Alternatively, similar really in, uh, in a bunch of these markets at the moment, we can draw in this trend line here and any close back through the trend line would suggest that the correction is, all, is completed for now. And, um, and we can look to re-engage on the long side, at least looking for that target and uh, potentially higher there with the uh, projected sending trend line resistance coming in at uh, 116.70. So I'm uh, certainly thinking about long setups in uh, the dollar yen there. Swissy. Looking for the Swissy to try and get through its ascending trend channel resistance. Or if we hold what we see is this scenario so we get that and we pull back into this uh sending trend line support before trying to recover and make another run to the upside trading just above the high volume mode here um and so seeing a bit of chop euro <coughs> euro is looking a little bit weak for the ec we've got the ecb today um, ideally, I'm looking for this to test this descending trend line resistance and then set up the next leg to the downside, which will coincide with that dollar testing up into um, the 95, 96 area. And then we see a more sustained reversal in the euro. Um, but again, if we take out this projected ascending trend line support, uh, we could be heading uh, straight there. So uh, I'm going to keep, uh, keep an eye on that. Euro yen is one also that I'm watching. So this, uh, the Euro yen correcting, let's look at the quality objective here. So any moves that get, 
well, we're, we're right in the zone now for uh, for this one to uh, to try and find its legs again. So if we can uh, if we can get bullish reversal patterns from this level, um, we will be looking at long positions. And certainly we've got this little internal trim line then to look as a reference point, get a close back through there, and we should uh, that should give the green light for another leg of upside in terms of uh, in terms of the euro. Uh, so in terms of the euro yen, we'll be updating that one. Euro Swiss coming into key test here. We've got projected ascend, uh, sorry, descending trend line support. We've got the extension from our B wave high here. So watching any test of 106.15 as, uh, as an opportunity on the long side, certainly think about three wave correction back into the high volume node there, 107.74. Then if we can get the grind it through there, then we can think about the semi trend line resistance coming in at 108.50 for the Euro Swiss. Euro sterling. Finally getting down to test that uh, 84 handle. So uh, I'm watching for an opportunity to play a, some counter trend longs here in Euro sterling. Certainly think about 86.30 on the upside. Then I'll update that through the trading view accounts in the coming sessions. Euro Kiwi. So we have this weekly. Um, Sitting right on this um, weekly trend line, close through there will be a pretty significant bearish development for the Euro Kiwi and um, open up some, uh, some interesting opportunities on the downside. So we'll see where we close this week. But if we close through there, then I'm going to be looking at, uh, I got, at strategies to get short the Euro Kiwi. And uh, we can think about this uh, extending lower to the downside. Um, Conscious of time here. A uh, couple of other ones that are going to uh, are coming into play. This is the sterling oh, daily, daily chart. Oops. Uh, sterling Aussie. <clears throat> yeah, so it's broken its trend line. So I'm looking for any pullbacks now in the sterling Aussie to, uh, to test this 184 from below. Watch for bearish reversal patterns to set short positions play for this projected descending trend line resistance. We've also got that high volume mode coming through there at 180.40. I'm gonna rattle through a couple of these now, guys, we're at time constrained. Um, sterling yen, so we've got that breakout through that major weekly resistance. So what we're looking for is opportunities to get into this on the, sh on the long side, uh, potential three wave correction here back into the prior highs. So I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns. Again, just as additional confirmation, if you uh, if you want, you can put in that trend line there. So looking for a bull bull flag scenario. Uh, the weekly target for this one is 164. Uh, so we watch for bullish reversal patterns to certainly think about a 159 uh, test, but. Really, what we're look, what ideally what we're looking to do is join up bigger trends and look for this extension up into the 164 area. So uh, that one is also on the radar. Uh, what else have I got? A bunch of these a bunch of these yen pairs are all in this wave four scenario. Um, so I'm going to I'll I'll update again um, the daily uh, trading view ideas because I see a bunch of opportunities developing in these yens. Um, Aussie yen, the Kiwi yen, looking for that to play up into this ascending trend line resistance. And then there's going to be an opportunity with, once we get the momentum divergence in play, to, uh, to trade that on the short side. Our dollar rand position working well. So now looking for a test of uh, 1530, shallow pullbacks, and we should see an extension up into that uh, 116 target zone with the, uh, the dollar around there, which was one that I highlighted last week. So it's, uh, it's going to be a question really of paying close attention now to how the market responds next week after the uh, Fed meeting. That's going to set a, uh, a phase of price action uh, to, to play. And, um, and then what we're ultimately looking for is going to be um, a reversal in, in any equity weakness that we see uh, that gives us opportunities on the long side trades uh, for that seasonal year-end move 
uh, ultimately then looking for some weakness in the dollar after the buy the rumor sell the fat trade sets up and uh, and we should see these fx majors trade higher as well post uh, post the market reaction to the fmc so with that said are there any questions you can type them into the chat box or the q a box uh um, yeah. please patrick how do you use fibonacci either for retracements or to execute trades um I, I don't specifically use Fibonacci as such to execute trades. I use it to uh, measure. Uh, I use it to measure market equality objectives. So I'm always looking at symmetry in the market and um, equality moves, measured moves. And so I use it for that. Um, and then where we have confluence, where we've got a measured move, and we've also got retracements, I then watch for the price action in that area. Uh, I don't trade off Fibonacci as such. I'm always watching for uh, price confirmations. Any other questions? Equally, if you don't have a question, an N in the chat box is useful uh, so that I know we do you perhaps do high frequency trading. Um, I don't do high frequency trading as such. I trade uh, normally most of my trading is off daily time frame, but in terms of the e, in terms of the futures products and the e mini S and P, I trade that on an intraday basis. Um, I have a bunch of uh, bunch of setups there that I, I, I and in, in additional confirmations from uh, market internals that I use to trade the uh, the e mini S and P. Um, so do you use the golden zone as a signal to execute your trade? Uh, what, sorry, what's the goal? Uh, I don't, um, I'm not sure what you mean by the golden zone. Um, okay, if there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this up here. Um, Uh, so you're saying any currency against JPY is on? Yeah, I, well, I, I am bullish, yeah, but I believe that uh, that we're in a fourth wave consolidation at the moment. So I'm waiting for that fourth wave to give me the signal that it's complete, and then I'm going to play for the fifth wave extension to the to the upside. Um, with respect, uh, more, with the Fibonacci's, I'm looking for more for confluence. So where we get, uh, you can, um, I've got, there's this basically a uh, catalog of all the uh, the webinars that I've done. And um, so I'll put that in, I'll put the link into the chat there. Uh, that's, uh, that should give you some sense of uh, how to go about it. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, yeah, I, um, in terms of the fundamentals, uh, I, I, I mentioned this last week, I'm, I, at, my, at my core, it's, it, the, the trading approach for me is technical. But I'm very cognizant of the fundamental drivers and dynamics in the market because when you get a technical setup, understanding the fundamentals gives you a sense of what the catalyst might be to drive the technical trade through to its conclusion. If you, if you, um, uh, for those that have asked about the, here's, the, let me just do this. There's the link, the trading view, uh, tick mill trading view account link that where I post the da daily, the trade ideas and their videos. So if you, if you want to get a sense of how it is I, I, I trade, then that following those ideas and, and the videos will give you uh, the best explanation because I break down the setup that I'm looking for, the, the confirmation that I'm looking for, how I've identified the trade location, et cetera. So that, uh, that will probably be useful for you. Um, and then lastly, again, for those who are interested in joining the, uh, the Facebook group to get the daily trade plan for the S&P 500, 
there's that link again you can just request membership and you can you'll get that daily video as well it's like i say three to five minutes and i don't just give the trade plan for the day ahead i also review the trade plan from the day before versus the price action that played out during the session so uh, so it gives you a high degree of transparency or it's high degree of transparency in terms of how effective that strategy is okay that said, I'm going to wrap this one up here, guys. Thanks very much for your time. I hope, uh, hope this helps.